Professor White talking, you first of all actually taught uh, uh, the question which we are about to, to look at, and that is the role of the uh, civil society in all of these, uh, ensuring uh, that uh, there is uh, a practical change in Africa that will ensure uh, this uh, empowerment and also uh, define Africa's role. Uh, Paseka, this question I am directing to you uh, because uh, we, we are aware of that uh, it is uh, uh, the, the moment of uh, multilateralism and uh, while when we are talking things like this that concern the African continent and also we talk about uh, blocks that are involved directly in uh, setting agendas across the African continent. It uh, will bring us toward uh, uh, the, the chair of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahmoud, uh, said some time ago like Africa has understood the dynamics uh, occurring at the international level and understood uh, that the continent has seduced many uh, global global powers uh, in uh, the present uh, century, but then uh, it was time for Africa to change its, uh, its own dynamics and see how to have a say at the international level. So now, let's bring in the aspect of the civil society in, uh, in line with our topic for discussion this day. How can the civil society help uh, actually harness uh, those uh, locals in Africa and position us better at the international arena? And of course, so we also look at uh, the uh, the role of the African diaspora in empowering Africa and defining still Africa's voice on uh, global affairs. Uh, Paseka Farumal. Thank you for that, Clarice. Uh, I think that is a very important question that you're asking. And I think to an extent, Dr. Eddie spoke to it significantly because when he spoke to key positions, we need to think who holds positions of power, who dictates the policy that the continent is governed on, who dictates the position of countries within the continent, who dictates what policy do we have in application or implementation on the ground. So the, 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 the role that civilians play is a crazy one because he had my brain running when he spoke to that and uh, about the ideas of key positions of power. Who actually is in positions of power? That's the significant questions that we need to ask ourselves because right now, our thinking and the thinking of the people responsible for making decisions that are impactful at the very highest level is not the same. Our leaders are removed from actual reality. A large majority of African leaders are removed from reality of the people on the ground. That is why they walk around with the delusion that everything is okay until they see an uprising. So it is important for us to be strategic as civilians on the ground and take key positions, build structures that are able to make us able to place our own people in these positions so that in the near future we have people who actually have a way of thinking that we have shared amongst us in this platform so that at the end of the day we have people who are in positions of power who can dictate policy who think the way that the people on the ground think but the problem is that power corrupts so with power corrupting men it becomes very difficult for us to make an argument that even us who speak like this today when we get to that position to those positions we will be able to dictate what we are dictating today or what we are trying to operationalize today when we are on the ground but from a more practical point of view you think about the united states and this is not be me being a a, a, a a what do you call this a conspiracy theorist the united states has bodies that are operating below or on top actually of the actual government these bodies dictate the realities of what government is able to do and unable to do we've heard in many interviews that presidents have come out and said uh, i'll use a specific example of barack of barack obama you must investigate this when he himself he said um uh, i would like to change the lives of people on the ground and the
And in this context, he was specifically referring to Black Americans. He said, I would like to make changes on the, on the ground, but there are things that are standing on the way that do not allow me to do that. So what that means is that there are actual bodies, organizations that are able to influence policy that even the president himself is not able to influence. So now if we are strategic, and this is more of a practice thing, of a practice matter, if we are strategic as civil society, as pan-African scholars and thinkers, if, as, 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 as specialists in our own fields, if we are strategic, we should be thinking strategically to say that these different movements and organizations that we've joined, that we call ourselves pan-Africanists, that we hope can be liberated, would not just be ending on spaces where we just speak of these things, but would be strategic and powerful strong enough to be able to actually influence who gets to what position by doing that we would be able to place ourselves in strategic positions of power and by then we will be able to actually influence and adjust policy on the ground do you see how powerful that is I, 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 that is one of the things that when Dr. Eddie was speaking and I was thinking about the conversations that we've had on this platform and other platforms like the CPP, which I'm a part of, and other, uh, I was listening in Adi and Adi meeting, uh, in other Pan-Africanist groups or uh, organizations. In those meetings, there's strategic people who have ideas of how to liberate our people, but those people are not placed in strategic positions because of the roles that we've designated ourselves ourselves too, of being observers and analysts for distance, but not proactive and active in making sure that we actually influence policy by placing strategic personnel in those positions. Pan-Africanism and structuring African people should be one of the most logical things done by any African leader. No African leader should say that they are anti-Pan-Africanist, they are anti the people of the continent, because once you say that, that means that you are an enemy of the people. If you are able to say that, that means that you do not care for the people on the ground and their actions do elaborate on that, that they do not necessarily want to center us as the people on the ground, but why? Because we did not strategically place ourselves in the necessary positions. We know historically a lot of our leaders who did actually live by these policies and ideas. When this is not being a conspiracy theory, there is evidence of our leaders being assassinated through the use of France or the United States, the Lumumbas of this world. These are not uh, uh, complicated things because these are actual people who I'm referring to and saying we start Charlie, uh, we, we are strategic in placing them in these positions and ourselves in being able to influence the actual policy. Outside of that, we are not going to actually survive this, uh, uh, this bombardment that the continent is faced with. We will not. I will leave it there. I would like to say much more, but I am cognizant of the time. And I would like my sisters to also touch on this. Thank you very much, Clarice. <laughs>